So you want to bring a tablet to school and you're wondering how do you access the CMS guest network? Well, when if you're using an iPad, you're going to click on your settings. You're going to make sure that your Wi-Fi is turned on and you're going to want to choose CMS guest 579. Once you do that, you're going to allow your uh, tablet to connect to the internet. We're going to give it a minute here. And you'll see that you have to accept the CMS guest network policy. Um, so you can see it says CMS is pleased to provide a guest wireless network for instructional and business use. This is basically asking you to accept the fact that CMS does have an internet policy, um, that there are consequences for students when it is not used properly. Um, it also means that this is going to be a filtered web access, so you may not have access to um, websites and activities and, and things that you would have access to from your home wireless network access. Um, this also means that it's monitored, so if CMS uh, notices that there is improper use going on, um, they will be contacting you. So we're going to click accept and it takes me straight to my home page. So now I'm connected to the internet and ready to go. When you bring a smartphone to West Mecklenburg and you're ready to access the guest network, the first thing you need to do is click on your settings. You need to make sure that your Wi-Fi is turned on. So my Wi-Fi is turned on. Then you want to choose CMS Guest 579. When you access this network, it's going to require that you accept the CMS policy. So automatically, it will bring up a page that says, Welcome to the CMS Guest Network. Um, it also gives a little bit of information about what you are accepting. This is accepting the acceptable use policy provided by Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. This also means that access to this network is filtered and monitored. So some of the websites that you would typically use from your home network access may not be accessible through the CMS guest network. Also, it means that some, some of the activity on this internet access will be monitored. But once you accept the policy and you click OK, you are automatically in and ready to go. So you brought a laptop to school and you're ready to access the internet using the Wi-Fi that we have here on campus. We're going to go over how you might do that. Most laptops have something in the bottom right hand corner that looks like bars, um, kind of like the AT&T commercials. But you can <clears throat> click on that and typically bring up the available Wi-Fi networks that are in the area. So once you do that, you're going to want to click on CMS Guest. As you can see, I'm already connected. Once I click on that, it's going to give me the option of clicking on Connect. If this is something that you want to use regularly, you can choose Connect Automatically. The computer makes the connection, and I'm ready to access the internet. And there I am. Now, another way that you can access the internet is by opening up your computer's network and sharing um, connection center. If I click on connect or disconnect here, you can see that I um, also bring up that same page. This is also an area on your computer where you might decide to troubleshoot something if you're having an issue. Now an important thing to remember is that once you are connected to the internet and you go to use the Internet Explorer or if you go through Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, whatever your choice is, one important thing to remember is that the first time that you use it, CMS is going to ask for you to accept their policy. Um, and it will bring up a, a CMS page where you have to accept that and say OK. Now it's important to remember that CMS requires that users of their guest network follow CMS policy. That means that whenever you're on the internet, 
you may have some things that are blocked through the guest network access. Um, it's like being a student. So even if you are a parent who is accessing the guest network, it's important to remember that uh, there are firewalls in place. Um, there may be some pages that are blocked that you don't typically have blocked when you are on your computers at home or on your tablets uh, or smartphones at home. So that's important to remember. Now something else that's really great, uh, if you are looking for more resources related to BYOT, there is a page on the CMS homepage called Transforming Digital Teaching and Learning. Uh, and this uh, kind of gives you an idea of some other things related uh, to CMS that are going on with technology. They also have a specific BYOT page where you can learn more about BYOT. Um, Wes Mecklenburg is getting ready to jump on board with this, um, but the great thing about this page is there are lots of ways that you can use BYOT when you're here in school. So if you need to know some more about that, please feel free to visit that page. Thanks so much. I hope you're accessing the network now and you're ready to start. sitting down with me and talking about BYOT. I appreciate it. Yeah. As a rising senior, I'm sure you yes. have a lot of perspective about that. Yes. So tell me, what is it that you like about BYOT? Well, um, you're a rising senior. You have uh, senior projects and um, the graduate project. And it was a lot to stay in school out of days to do it on the computer. But since you can bring it and download it or put your um, your flash drive. Your, your flash drive in there. Um, that helped a lot. And then I'll bring my iPad and save it. And if my teacher had to write some stuff, well, she can email it to me. And actually, it's excellent. So it just really supports all the work that you're doing in school. Yes, and especially how the computers is now. So that's great. Yeah. Um, how have you used it at school? Maybe in classes and things. Um, like that? Actually, honors English. English, you're going to use it at all times. Okay. Now, math, science, social studies, not barely, but social studies and English, because it's a lot of writing and all of that. And actually, your day 10th and 11th grade, I advised the rising ninth graders that they're going to use it. Because actually, when my teacher gave us the project and she said, Y'all got a senior exit and you have to pass it in 10 pages, how can we do that in a week without bringing our own technology? Right. So, therefore, I went home. I type it at school, then save it to my flash drive, then I take it home and um, type it. Okay. So I'll be already done. Okay. Right. Head in the game. Right. Sure. Any ideas on how you want to use it next year? Actually, next year I just talked to my uh, senior English teacher, and she said we're going to use it all the time, probably on the first day of school. That's great. So um, I advise everybody to use it. And also, when we do bring our own technology, know when to use it. And um, talk to me a little bit about that. What do you mean, knowing when to use it? So, if the teacher teaching, you just pull out your cell device, and um, she teaching, and what she teaching about is not that she told you to bring out your technology or pull out your cell device, because they will tell you to bring out your technology or bring it to school. And um, I remember one we had. I had one classmate, and he pulled out his technology, and he had he got it taken away for a week, and he couldn't do his project, and he felt bad because like don't take advantage of it. It's nice that now the CMS letting us do this. Right. Use what they want. So now it's actually it's excellent. I am so happy that we had it. Great. Great. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking.